everybody, and welcome to the D-Pad. I'm your host, Brad Davis, and you're watching the show is all about video games. This is our fourth episode. For this episode, we're going to be dedicating things to Portal 2. Portal 2 is a sequel to Portal 1, obviously. Again, it came out back in 2007 and was a game that many people played on the orange box. Many thought that the game was fantastic and therefore Valve made a sequel to the game and the sequel to the game, Portal 2, was one of the most highly anticipated titles of uh, this year, 2011. So does the game live up to this hype? Found this review coming up right now. Again, welcome to the Aperture Science Enrichment Center. We are currently experiencing technical difficulties due to circumstances of potentially apocalyptic significance beyond our control. However, thanks to emergency testing protocols, testing can continue. These pre-recorded messages will provide instructional and motivational support so that science can still be done, even in the event of environmental, social, economic, or structural collapse. The portal will open and emergency testing will begin in three, Two, one. Portal 2 was a highly anticipated first person puzzle game that came out late in April of this year. The first Portal was a fantastic game and therefore Portal 2 was hyped up to a triple A level. Understandably though, some couldn't picture how a puzzle game could be a triple A title. So does Portal 2 live up to the way that many anticipated it to be? Yes, though you more likely won't feel that way until you get through the beginning parts of the game. As soon as you start the game, you'll notice that the environments are very different compared to the first game. The environments in Portal 1 were mostly dull and plain. The environments in Portal 2 changed throughout the course of the game with the beginning stages looking like a futuristic run-down jungle. It definitely looks like a new game compared to the first Portal. Once you get over the way the environments look though, the gameplay becomes very familiar. The puzzles early on are pretty much the same in terms of difficulty compared to the first game. Players who have played the first game shouldn't have too hard of a problem with the early puzzles in Portal 2. When you move along with the game though, you have to use new items such as laser cubes, launch pads, and light bridges to solve puzzles. All of these make the game feel new while still feeling very familiar at the same time. They make the game a bit harder due to the items being new, but the puzzles never feel unfair. The puzzles are very smartly set up and once you figure them out, you're more likely to say to yourself, Duh. Every so often after completing the puzzle, the game will take an unexpected turn. I don't want to give anything away, so all I'll say is that the game really branches out making the game feel almost like a spin-off of itself during some parts even though you are using the same gameplay mechanics. The single player mode of the game is a great ride with a whole lot of polish especially in comparison to the first game. The game also features a lot of smart adult humor and therefore the whole package reminds me of a Pixar film. It's funny while not resorting to trashy humor. The game has added a co-op mode with puzzles that will only work when you play with another person, which therefore makes the mode not feel as if it's tacked on. Since you really have to work with a partner to solve these puzzles, I recommend playing the co-op mode with a friend instead of playing the mode with a random person online. So overall, Portal 2 is a fantastic game. The single player mode is a great ride that's definitely triple A quality due to the polish of the game's design, voice acting, and writing. The game kind of tricks you in many ways since as soon as you feel that the game is becoming a bit too routine, things change unexpectedly, therefore making the game feel fresh again. The game turns a simple gameplay concept of going from room to room into a game that feels much more than just that. Some parts of the game did feel a bit slow to me. So a large part of that was due to the fact that I was playing the game for a long period of time and needed to take a break. The game is definitely one of the best games this year and is a must buy. While the game isn't really pick up and play and doesn't have much replay value after you beat it, the game is a great experience. Drop down to online deathmatch shooters and give your brain a workout. Alright, well that was a review of Portal 2, and it's a fantastic game, it got our very first uh, A- minus in the history of the show, and therefore it's definitely a must buy. Anyways, as I said earlier in the show, what we're going to be doing for this episode is doing uh, the whole the whole show is going to be about Portal 2, 
So what we're gonna do next is uh, critique a news story that came out about a, a couple weeks now, and I'm pretty sure some of you guys may have seen it already. And it's about Pearl 2 and a father uh, getting mad at the fact that the game kind of pokes fun at, uh, well, he says it pokes fun at adopted uh, kids. Now, is he being, you know, is his argument reasonable or is he just overreacting? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to sound off. Microphone one, two, one, two. All right, so let's see a uh, news story. Let, let's see what the father has to say. Making fun of adoption. And tonight, a father is shocked at the insensit uh, insensitivity he says he witnessed. Here's the clip. What's wrong with being adopted? But, but well, um, lack of parents. Well, you are adopted, and that's terrible. The game is called Portal 2, and it's only been available for about a month. Regina Mack just uh, talked to the father who shared this who saw this with his daughter. Yeah, I bet he was shocked and, and really surprised by something like yeah, this. Yeah, no idea. Uh, it, it, if he played a good portion of the game, he would know that that's the whole humor of the game. You know, the game has a lot of dark humor, and that it, it basically fit the rest of the game in terms of its humor. So it shouldn't have been that much of a surprise to him. Uh, particularly Horrible. because this is a game that builds itself as educational. It's rated E for everyone. All right, now don't get me wrong. The game is definitely a game that targets itself as you know, making it making the players think a lot. But the game isn't advertised as an educational game since it's not an educational game. An educational game would be a game like you know, Jumpstart or you know, some learning program in which kids have to do math problems and stuff. And also, the game is not rated E. It's rated E10, which means everybody 10 and up. As we said, Neil Staple was playing the game with his 10-year-old adopted daughter when they saw the clip tonight. He says he and his wife are still searching for a way to try to explain it. I, I didn't know what to do. I still don't know what to do. Neil Staple uh, still can't believe what he heard while playing the video game <laughs> Portal 2 with his 10-year-old adopted daughter Zoe. All right, fatty, adopted fatty. Fancy, fancy, no parents. Did you hear that? The character in the popular kids' video game is actually taunted for being adopted. You know, it's funny how they presented that clip since it, due to the way that, the, that they presented it, it the uh, line, it, well, the whole thing was taken pretty much out of context since, since after uh, Whitley say, says that, uh, Gladys calls uh, Whitley a moron for saying that. So obviously the game knows that what you know the character said was really stupid and you know not a good thing to say since you know Whitley gets called a moron after saying it. So again, it, it, this is just making a big deal out of nothing, especially considering the fact that the game didn't really meant it to be, you know, something that, that was, you know, a, a, a really main joke, you know, especially since, you know, uh, Whitley down, well, excuse me, Gladys downplays Whitley by calling him a moron after saying, you know, that the whole thing about uh, the main character being adopted. It literally pokes fun for not having parents. While Neil says he and his wife Marcia have never hidden the fact Zoe is adopted. She's Chinese. She obviously doesn't look like us. They wanted to wait until she was ready to talk about it. Yeah. It throws the question, the most ultimate question that that child is ever going to have for you. And it just throws her right in the living room. Shocked at what he'd heard, like Neil immediately cut the game off, <laughs> hoping Zoe hadn't heard the cruel joke from a video game billed as educational and appropriate for everyone 10 and up. And it says rated E for everybody, and I was thinking maybe it's rated E for everybody except for orphans. I mean, come, come on, I mean, now, you, now this is getting kind of ridiculous, I mean, the, the, the uh, Glad, uh, excuse me, Whitley also called of the main character of Fatty too, so I guess you also think that the game is for everyone to end up just up for orphans and fatties too, right? I mean, this, I mean, now how is this getting ridiculous? I mean, there's other forms of media including, you know, uh, books, movies, and uh, TV shows, which, um, you know, just, well, they're, they're, they're afraid of the kids and, you know, they have a school setting and, like, the bully, the, the character who's a bully, you know, will say things to the kid. You know, and you know, it, it makes 
it, it, it's not something to get you know offended about. I mean, it's just replicating you know what you know people do. I mean, people make fun of others, but you know this this is nothing compared to what you know I, I have heard, especially uh, when I grew up in uh, school. And uh, your daughter uh, is ten, and she's in school right now. I'm pretty sure that what she hears at school doesn't compare to what was you know in that game. So again, you're. I feel like he's uh, really overreacting. If you're not an adoptive parent, it's probably not that big a deal to you. If you are an adoptive parent, it was literally the worst thing that I could possibly have heard. But did Zoe hear it? She's sticking to her guns that she didn't hear it, and to me that message means she's not ready to talk about it and I'm not going to force it. Now what do I do? Should have put her there. Until she is, Neil says they steer clear of that part of the game and hope their daughter never feels like she's any less because she's adopted. I can't imagine my life without her. I mean, it, she's just such an awesome child. She's just made our lives so much better. Now again, we did say this game was educational and it's because you have to sort of figure out a way to get out of every single room. <laughs> All right, so uh, that makes the game educational. Uh, like, like I said before, the game isn't isn't advertising itself as being educational. It's it's, it's being advertised the game that makes people think, and like uh, that that it, it is in no way educational. Going from room to room, that what you gonna what what are people gonna learn from that? I mean. <laughs> We did contact Sony, who distributes the game. They told us to contact Valve, the company that actually created the game. I did. We have not heard back from them. They are passing the buck on to somebody else. Certainly though. seems that way. But I do want to add that they still like the game. It's just that one part that he says yeah. is he feels is unacceptable. Yeah, unfriendly. Can't play. <laughs> well, well, of course Sony's going to hand over to Valve since they don't make the game. They All they do is make the system that you play the game in. I mean... Pro 2 is also an Xbox 360 game, so with your logic, you should have called both Sony and Microsoft. Now also, um, while I do feel that the father is overreacting about this, I'm also, you know, it, it, it's a, a good thing to see a parent be, uh, well, act, well actually know, you know, what their kids do and actually be involved in uh, the things that their kids do. Um, during the time in which that news story was released, there was definitely a lot of of um, crazy stuff going on, you know, in this country and in this world, and the fact that they actually gave this, you know, attention, you know, a, a three-minute um, news story, it, it's kind of surprising. I, I mean, well, I, I mean, I guess it was a slow news day or something for them. I guess they just couldn't, you know, pick up any more news stories or something. I just don't get why they would give this, you know, so much attention. So, anyways, that's all I have to say about uh, this adoption controversy for Portal 2. Microphone one two one two. All right, well that ends another episode of D-Pad. Hopefully you guys enjoy watching the show. Until next time, this is Brad Davis saying goodbye, everybody.